Welcome back my YouTube family. So for this drawing, I'm not gonna draw any of your suggestions. I know I have a lot of them, but sometimes I just wanna do what I wanna do and this will be one of those videos. And for this instance, I wanna do Lady of Justice, but I just explain you what it's gonna be, not this one. So I'm gonna pick a woman myself. I'm gonna probably change the clothes. I'm probably gonna cut half of the drawing off just till there, just because I want to. I'm probably going to find different reference photo for the scales, for the arm, for the hair, loads of new stuff and I'm probably going to get that sword to be cut into her somewhere in the chest like somebody stab her just because life is not fair and she's lady of the justice I think that just makes sense and yeah so this is going to be probably the, the idea but reference photos we're going to find ourselves and what, what I mostly do is I find a bunch of reference photos, a bunch of scales, da, 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 da. And when I draw, I just literally add to it. Take little pieces and just add stuff to it. You'll see. So first we need to find a woman who's pretty enough. And we'll start from there. So as you see, I found few reference photos. So this is gonna be the idea what we're gonna do, the Lady Justice. These probably gonna be the idea of the scales. I don't know if I'm gonna copy everything as it is, but this will be the main thing. Then I did like this idea that she's blindfolded. I'm probably gonna do like a fabric one, but I do like the idea of uh, closed mouth. I think that's pretty cool. So she can't say anything as well. This is probably gonna be the positioning I'm gonna aim the scales, the body, stuff like that. Uh, I found like a Roman dress, so I'm gonna turn this woman, uh, this body into this dress. And I did like the body, the lower part of this, so I might be gonna use this as well. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I'm gonna combine those into one. This is gonna be the handband. Probably has a different name for it, but I'm gonna call it just body uh, foot headband I can't speak today and this is gonna be the handle for the sword what's gonna go into her chest I don't need the bottom one just because I just I can just extend those lines and that's it that makes a full sword I just needed a good handle and that's about it so now I'm gonna probably start with that one get that body positioning on this piece of paper then gonna drop the scales in and just work from it I'm gonna add loads of stuff to it and if I'll need it to explain to you something, I'm going to give a go. And yeah, we're going to start from that. So this is going to be the idea. And then we're going to start with that image right now.
So that's how far we are now. It's getting pretty crazy, pretty detailed, and problem is I'm gonna need to add lots more detail because there's gonna be little chains down, uh, holding, holding down this little plate or what that is for the scales for both of them. So this area is gonna be crazy busy. I don't know how did I get myself into this, but it's gonna be crazy busy, crazy lot of details. And I don't think anyone else on YouTube can pull off this, you know? I think I'm one of those like, one of those people who challenge themselves. I've seen lots of YouTube videos when they teach you all the bare basics, but it's not, I'm not for that. So what we really did, we used the woman's uh, body to just get the placement. Then I added the scales from different image, but I turned them rather than flat, but a little bit in uh, some kind of perspective. So they go a little bit in an angle. They're not just flat straight, they're a little bit curved. Uh, get that sword into her chest. This is gonna be the way I'm gonna finish. So there will be a little fabric holding the, uh, coming down from her arm. It wraps around here goes up and then it goes down to this area that is gonna be hers kind of ribs falling back down just like a devilish this is her spine he's go it's gonna get there about this area I don't know how we're gonna finish the fabric what comes from her chest so that needs to be planned out but I did like a rough kind of sketch to get the image I wanted to go for um, I taped the mouth get the folds on we'll need to do the hair a little bit more all over the place but that's probably gonna be when I line most of it so I don't lose all these little details and then I get into the hair stuff I think it's pretty crazy I think it's pretty bang on and like I said the reference image is there that's just your idea don't get too crazy about it if you can't match it to that because that is your design that's just a photo somebody took that somebody get paid for it somebody just did because you love to do and you can use that to do what you love to do and this is how you can create your image uh, from what did we use five seven images into one and you just add stuff to it, sketch it plan it out and yeah it's it's pretty basic pretty easy like you, you just draw as you go you add stuff as you go I literally I drew it, as, as you saw me I drew the body then I took the the scales on it, planned that out a little bit as far as it goes. Then I think I did this, or maybe the other way around, don't know. But you can just plan that out. Then you figure out, oh, you want a sword, just ch chuck that in. That's the pretty easy there. I'm probably gonna do hair as well, all over the place. But first I need to get like the main, main details on it so you can see them. And then the weird areas like this shoulder, I don't like how clean that is. Probably I'm just going to do one hair bending over or stuff like that. So it, it just, it's detailed all over the place. And nothing's been left behind. I kind of want to chuck something on the hair's neck. But I think it's going to be way too detailed. And it could get to the point where it's really, really hard to read and really hard to understand what's going on. So I don't think I'm going to do that. Probably I'm gonna grab a quick break, make a coffee, get some energy, and then I'm gonna be flying through with a fine liner, or I'll maybe gonna go one more time with a pencil, just doing all these little small details. The problem is the pencil I have, it's it smooches a little bit. Probably all the pencils do like that, but if I'm gonna add loads of like little tiny tiny details there, by the time I get something done here, I'm just gonna smooch all that. And there's no point in me doing all the little small details. That's the reason I did the big ones first. And small ones goes into the area where you pretty much done all the big ones. And then you can jump onto the little ones. And the final ones we're going to do when I'm going to do with fine liner. But from now, a break, coffee, and then lining. Audio jump.
So this is how far we are now. I know I did a law. What I did is I made a TikTok video, a live video, and I was lining as as I was making live video and I was talking to people answering the questions. So I get carried away. Sorry, but you won't see this as a time lapse video. As you can see, I did quite a lot. I did some black in there. I did all the line work. Next, we need to do the shading and yeah it turned out pretty cool i like all these little details that came out really sweet same in this side quite cool uh this is gonna be the blood coming out dripping there dripping there and it's gonna follow all the way here i don't know if i'm gonna do it in color or just black and gray or we'll see we'll see about that one but so far i'm really happy how it turned out Really nice, really detailed. I, I can see like I'm pushing my own style a little bit more further than I was. I, I used to do more simpler than this one, but now I'm, I don't know. I, I think I'm crossing styles now. I don't believe this is like fully neo-traditional. This is more uh, illustrative style, but I love it. What comes out for me, that what comes out. So it is what it is. I'll probably go over with the black pen pencil. Just remember, I always keep your reference photos really close to you, so you can just like really quickly see, have a look. Because I changed a lot of in this design based on this designs. A lot of things you'll need to come up with imagination, just as it would look like. But still, try to keep like reference photos really close, especially for these little stuff small details and stuff like that it really really helps and for coloring I will use oily ones I don't know probably they have a name for it they just oily they don't smooth as I go because sometimes I just need to add a little bit shading there just in case I have to say I build up to 90 or 80 percent of the shading and once I get all the image done then I go over back and forwards left and right to add a little bit darker where I need to adjust some stuff so I don't do 100% full as it would be as I first I go I'll leave for the next time to adjust a little bit and for that reason I like to use oily ones or wax ones or I don't know what they're based on but they're not dry the dry ones really smudge by the time I get <clears throat> one area done and I go back and I just smudge with my hand and it's just annoying and Plus, I don't want to keep like, I've seen other people doing, they put a piece of paper underneath, but then I feel like I don't see the whole image, so I don't know how much I need to add, because I can't see like the half of design, and I can see only this little portion, so I like to see the whole thing, and then based on that, I like to fly around, and for that reason I use these oily ones. This, for example, is thick, I don't know, probably you can't see, but it's BIC pen so on. Yeah, that's that. Alright, let's go. Three, two, one. When you get into the busy area like this one, you get lots of stuff going over each other and it's really hard to understand what's going on. You have to make a decision what you're going to make light, what you're going to make dark. All of them can't be in the same tone, same color or same texture. You have to 
make a decision you need to sacrifice one what you're gonna make darker so for example I wanted to make the, the this darker and the bandage darker but because these small stuff was in the hair I had to make the hair darker so these little small bits stand out and you can see them now and probably be before that you really can understand what's going on so you have to make a decision to make one stuff darker same goes for this area making that inner section darker these just now stand out a lot more if I would make them a little bit lighter and then I add shading here and then I add shading there, there, there they all would come up in the same tone with the same color and you have to make a decision what's going to be the darkest one and then what's going to be on top of it that's that's the way I make it how to say really readable so if I make this area darker then I would normally do it just helps to bring this out and this helps to bring this one out as well and it just helps each other so that's why I do two separate stuff I make something a little bit darker and then remember you can't have two tones next to each other in the same color or the same brightness or same contrast or same I don't know how to explain that but imagine if this is dark you can't have dark in here you will need to shade maybe from here leaving a small highlight coming from this end hitting this area and making this portion lighter same will go with this horn I will need to shade probably somewhere in the middle leaving a little highlight here what separates from the black white dark light this area will be darker again because of the nose then there's light and so on so on so you never ever have two tones next to each other in the same tone if that makes sense and same goes with the color never ever have two colors next to each other pretty much the same that's that's like a big rule what I'm shading now is overall value so I want to see where the darks are where the lights are what's going on pretty much bringing more to the finish but not really finishing anything I just want to separate in my eyes like this area will be darker this area will be darker and I'll do all that and only then I will adjust to make sure like it's dark enough but now I'm just building up the image same this won't be probably finished and that's not finished and that's not finished even this one probably is not finished just bringing adding more stuff to it to to see more realistic more 3d and when I get to that point I'll let you know Just wanted to say real quickly, the way I'm shading comes from the way I tattoo. So, to get smooth shading, basically you need to shade without edges. With edges, I mean the starting point. Just looks horrible, I shouldn't really do this here, but anyways. You don't touch and then pull it down. That's horrible. There's not a chance you're going to get evenly... It's gonna look scratchy and even with a pencil and a paper just looks horrible yeah so the way you shade is you move your needle or your pencil that way like a smiley face this is how you would see from a side so it doesn't have imagine if this is a paper yeah and that's how you shade yeah like this like a smiley face and once you do that you don't have edges it becomes really smooth the bigger your needle is the bigger uh, magnum or curved mag or something 
for smaller routines, but just try not to do this. Or Im imagine if you do have a line and you need to start from it. See, it's, it's quite hard to get it perfect. So this is what you do. You do smiley face towards that line. Yeah, so you, from the side, it will look like this. So it's not straight line, but it's curved. Yeah, you still do curved one. And what you do is, you start from here, from outside, where it's up in air, and then you gradually touch. Then you stop it, and you come back out again. See what I'm doing? You go in, see that already made really smooth shading. And then you touch where it needs to touch, and then you pull it out. Of course you can go slower or faster, but this is how I shade as well. And then I just come back here and add a little bit to just even out. But yeah, but if you do this, it's just, it's gonna look horrible. It's not gonna heal evenly. And when it heals, you will see all these little scratches and lines and this looks way better every day. So you, in the air, you come down, touch, and go back. You literally go to that line you, you made, or to your stencil line, or anything like that. But don't touch and pull out, touch and pull out. So imagine if machine goes up and down, it hits like, I don't know, 10, 15 times. By the time you touch the, the skin, it already hit. And only then it starts to make movement out. He hits and he gets out. He hits and he gets out. He hits. So this area gets really damaged. And then you just pull it out. But if you just build it, it's way better. So the same I do when I'm shading, for example, I just did here and because I was shading like this, I thought I'm going to explain to you what am I doing. And you can see I'm just building naturally, just back and forwards motions, drawing smiley faces. Yeah, it would look from the side like that. You know what I mean? And it's just that way. Yeah. Same, just smiley faces. It doesn't have that first hit and then down. It doesn't have that scratch. It's, it's way better to do it. That's just a little tip from me. If you use it or don't use it, that's up to you.
Now probably I'm gonna jump on the background, but before I get there, I just wanna remind you, yeah? This is how you never put two colors next to each other, because this is black, you leave this white, just leave it, don't touch it. That is black again, then there's white, black, white, black, white, black, white. See what I mean, yeah? If you jump, and it's that easy for you to see what happens. And then what I did is, see how here, because the background is white, I did this portion, this small item, darker. And then when it goes down, then the background is dark, and I left it white. And again, it's really easy for you to understand where it finishes. Same here, white background, I did this darker, and then even this closing is still white, and I did darker here. And because the background is here is darker, I did this black, and then the closing background is darker, then I left this white. Same I did here, same I did in here as well. You can see this is light compared to the black background. Speaking of that, that needs to be darker. And when it goes down, then the background becomes white, and then I did this item, small thingy, darker again. Same here, same there, same all the way through. And for the reason that a lot of her lights or shadows is nearly the same color as the background. For that reason, I think I'm gonna do oval again, background, what separates her from behind it. I'm probably gonna do, I'm, I'm wondering about maybe red or maybe some kind of blue color just to push it out a little bit and it's kind of itching me. I do want to add some little red stuff on her, but I don't know. It's always tricky when I get into color, then I can't stop and then I'm going to finish all in the color. But I want to keep it simple, just maybe a little bit blue behind it. Maybe some small stuff, maybe a little bit blood in red or something, but not too crazy. I want to keep it black and gray. I think it looks good as it is. And then we need to find a decent blue. I wanna go for probably this kind of, not nothing too dark because there's quite a lot of darkness on her already. I don't wanna make it too dark. I would probably go between this, this, or this. I don't know which marker will last me that long to do all the background. I'm hoping I'm gonna pick a good one and it's gonna go all the way through. I'm probably gonna do some test, uh, test sketching to see how liquidy they are, how how good they are, and then see which one, they're pretty much all the same, this one looks a bit different, but they're all pretty much the same tone as well, so, so yeah, I'm gonna jump one of these, we'll see which one.
as you can see, I did end up doing some red on the chest. I think it, it nicely gives like a focal point to where you look at it. Uh, the reason I added blood all the way to this fabric world down here, it really nicely separates where the arm is and what's the chest behind it. And then this kind of portion separates the chest from the fabric down here. I wish I didn't do the pink. I think that really killed it. I wish I could turn the time back and not do it, but when I did try it in this little section there, then I thought it's gonna look okay-ish, but when I end up making that full circle, I regret doing that. And I don't believe this is Neo Traditional anymore. I believe it's in between Neo Trad and Black Work. I think I just mixed them all both together. It's cool design, I love it, but I, I wouldn't fully say it's nail traditional nail traditional anymore. Can't speak now. I added my logo here, and where else down there? I did made a Instagram live video, and doing that I did small bits why I didn't do a more timeless video because I'm filming on my phone, so it's really hard. Well, it's impossible to do both at the same time. I have to choose one or other. And I did I did want it to try how it is to do Instagram live videos when I'm drawing. And it's pretty cool. Pretty interesting. People have some questions and it's really nice to interrupt with them. And, and few subscribers came back on Instagram and talked to me and I gave him tips. And he literally saw that design before you saw. So it's quite sneaky. But... It's quite cool, I like, asked me a few questions, answer that, it's really nice. And yeah, that's about it. So it's a lady of the justice, she got sword punched in the middle of the chest. She's holding the scales in there. I didn't want to make scales straight down, you know, as they always do, hold straight down. So I made it like she jumped a little bit and these little pots or cups, wherever they are, they did jump and they bent this these chainy parts I think that just adds like a little bit of movement a little bit some kind of more interesting to look at it rather than just being straight down um, that's her spine these are the ribs going backwards and that's like the overall image yeah I think it's pretty cool if you got a suggestion for the next video let me know this video I did because I wanted to do it I wanted to have fun I know I make a lot of videos for you guys, but sometimes you just need to have fun for yourself. Otherwise, you don't feel the the drive anymore. So I wanted to see what I can do when I just do what, just to see what comes out for me, basically. So a big thank you for watching. If you did watch till then, I hope you did learn something. If you did, then I'm well happy. And if you could text that underneath in comment section then I would know that he did added value to somebody and if there's a request what you would like me to do then I'll do it let me know in the comments as well I have a app in my phone where the notes are and I have a list of what people have said I still need to do lettering I still need to do animals properly fabric clothes hair a lot of stuff a big list so I'll get there one day just wanted to squeeze this one in first. Yeah, like I said, thank you very much, guys. A big thank you for watching. I hope you like it. I hope you learn. And we'll see you next time. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's going to be pretty soon. On 12th of April, I'm back to work. Till that time, I'm going to make loads of videos because I have free time. After that, I'll be working like every single day drawing for customers and da -da -da -da. I'll be busy. Till then, I'll try to squeeze in like as many videos as possible. So... I'll be I'll be back here soon. So take care guys.